welcome back to Dr. Noah's uh, YouTube update. And I kind of go through the scientific literature, and this week I like to go over some things that have been published in the last couple days. So this was published in the uh, Clinical Journal of American um, Nephrology, which means uh, kidney problems there, vitamin D, and acute respiratory infection with dialysis uh, patients. Now, kind of an interesting little off the topic there, but really kind of apply. What's the number one reason for dialysis? That's right, non-strong anti-inflammatories because they always cause kidney and liver damage, that's the number one reason that people have to have kidney failure in kidneys. So when you take those little fun little pills like Motrin and Tylenol and aspirin, that's what it's doing, it's hurting you, and so number one reason for dialysis where you have kidney failure. But in this study here, it showed that using vitamin D, one of my most favorite uh, vitamins right now, uh, and lots of research on it, probably tens of thousands, is that taking vitamin D or being deficient in vitamin D definitely increases the chances of infection because vitamin D is one of the critical components of over 2,000 genes in your 25,000 uh, complex of genes in your, uh, in your body there, in term, and in especially with your immune system. So this study showed you here. Now, you don't have to have dialysis to once again take vitamin D. Vitamin D is good for depression, for bones, of course, helps with getting your immune system. And so this is just another supporting that vitamin D is critical in terms, in terms of keeping it healthy. You need to take a, usually a blood test. We like to have it over 50 in terms of the marker like that. Most people need to take between two and 5,000 international units a day, not the, the four to 800 that uh, is kind of outdated like that. So vitamin D is very, very important. Here's another favorite study. Once again, only published in a medical uh, psychoneuroendocrinology. You know, that's kind of an interesting article, May uh, 2011. So that was just last month. Curcumin or turmeric is for the treatment of pain and depression. Now, turmeric is just, and curcumin is like one of the, just like vitamin D, very, very hot. There's research going on, uh, stage two clinical trials at uh, MD Anderson down in Texas, the premier cancer research uh, uh, facility in the world. Turmeric is hot I mean, in terms of that you should be thinking about it. And we've talked about uh, some other products, a Nerf 2 uh, activator that uh, I really like and been, been looking at the research. And we'll talk a little later on about another new study from the Louisiana State University uh, protandem helping with little things like skin cancer, which is a rapidly growing, actually one of the uh, most rapidly growing cancers out there right now. Well, in this study here, it showed, once again, the results is just suggest that curcumin may play a role in treating pain and depression. So these are drug doctors. They're starting to realize, you know, the drugs aren't working. Uh, the drugs have def definitely different types of side effects. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about an article that just came out that uh, uh, what's more dangerous death because of accidents with gunfire, you know, people honing guns and killing, or medical doctors. Well, this study showed that uh, going to your drug doctor was only 90,000% more dangerous than possibly being killed by uh, an accidental gun. So that shows you, once again, the kind of horror out there in terms of drugs and medical procedures. So we'll talk a little bit about that. I hope I have that article here. So once again, there are lots of natural type of products out there. I'm just going to do one more that's kind of interesting. Probiotics in the treatment of antibiotic-associated di diarrhea, which we'll talk a little bit later, is now there's a big scare. There's a new bug out in Europe that, once again, is like the super, super, duper, duper killer bug out there that there's no drugs, it kills people, and it's just mostly in meat, and we'll talk about why that is, because 70% of antibiotics are used in, in uh, meat, pr meat production. Uh, this t overuse of antibiotics has just gone way too crazy. We know, like, sinus infections. Drug doctors give antibiotics. Over 90% of, of sinus infections are due to what? Viruses and fungus. So antibiotics are right. Ear infections, 80 to 95% are not that. So this overuse of antibiotics, using antibiotic soap, all this kind of you know hyper OCD type of stuff has now created these super type of disaster bugs, almost like a science fiction movie, where these bugs are gonna take over the world, and quite possibly that could be the case. So thanks for uh, watching. We'll t talk to you a little bit more about uh, next week about some things that you can do to help you keep healthy and happy. Thanks. All right, it's June Pro Tandem updates, and uh, yeah, this is an exciting compound that I've talked about quite a bit. YouTube's uh, on my TV show, written about it. Uh, a compound that made up of five five herbs, and uh, it's just it's just blowing away me and actually the medical profession. Well, now it just released actually just yesterday from the Louisiana State University another. Uh, peer review scientific article. This is number eight now. And once again, very unusual for a natural product. Uh, once again, most drugs don't have more than one or two. And these, as we've talked about before on my show, uh, it's, it's now um, 
most of these are what are called third party. These are where people have just taken the product and basically done the research. Just like with drug companies, when the drug company does it in-house, that's called first and second party. Not a strong evidence because there's a possibility of maybe cheating a little bit like that. So these are all mostly now third party, so very, very exciting. So this is uh, published here in Enzyme Research, June 2011. It's kind of a review article just showing the magnificent impact that this NERF2 activator, this protanum compound, these five herbs, have to do on the different types of what are called survival genes. These are the most important genes of the 25,000 genes you have. I mean, it's important. I mean, I like my blue eyes, and at one time I had blonde hair, and those are all kind of genetic factors like that. But that's not going to really have too much of an impact in terms of day-to-day -day survival, and that's why these make them fun, like, like cancer, heart attacks, diabetes, that's survival stuff. Radiation from the environment. These are all, once again, things that can either kill us or we survive, and these survival genes are very important. And so in this article here, as I've talked about a lot, they talk a lot about what's called P53, the angel, the, the angel gene. And this is a particular type of part of the surveillance of our body in terms of keeping you to be able to survive. Because if you have cancer, guess what? You, you're not going to survive, and depending on what stage it's at in terms of your age, you might not be able to reproduce. So it's an important survival factor. So this P53, if it's working right, goes up and down the, the little, like the, down the street and checking all the genes, and if they, the P53 detects some type of damage or mutation, then what it does, it either fixes it or destroys it. End of story with cancer. So that's why they're so exciting. We talked a little bit about drug companies and biotech companies are falling over themselves, trying to, once again, find something that can activate this or actually cor correct the, any type of damage to P53. So very, very exciting. So, so in this you know, article here, once again, there it is right there, Real Science, shows you that uh, this particular type of natural product is very, very powerful in terms of helping skin cancer, which is the fastest growing type of cancer. So take a look at it, uh, and we'll talk to you soon. And welcome back to uh, NERF2 Oxidative Stress Update, Dr. Noah, and just kind of to show you in terms of the importance of understanding some type of therapy or some type of approach in terms of dealing with NERF2, as we talked about, which regulates uh, up to four to 600 uh, genes. We just talked a little bit talk a little bit earlier about a new study that came out with skin cancer, uh, and also of oxidative stress, which is the dogma of all type of diseases like that. So. I just kind of go, go through the different types of uh, scientific uh, evidence there. So Alzheimer's is a big deal. Uh, you know, uh, there was a big uh, conference uh, back in December of 2010 showing that the medical profession, like most of the things, has nothing to offer like that. But well, once again, the average uh, Alzheimer's patient costs about $90,000 for doing nothing. Okay, well, let's not get into that right now. So in this uh, um, Alzheimer's Disease Association Disorders 2000, yeah, real science here, uh, oxidative stress, antioxidants, and Alzheimer's disease. So, well, so we know that drugs and other things don't work, but well, once again, that's what's so sad. In the medical, in the drug journals themselves, they say, yeah, there are other alternatives there, but yeah, yeah, uh, it, it's not the drugs. And so, as it says here, recent evidence in the field of Alzheimer's disease research, this is their quotation, not mine, uh, has highlighted the importance of oxidative process in its pathogenesis, or how it's created like that. And then the end of the thing, because of the proximal role of oxidative stress, means the closeness to mechanism, seem to play in the pathogenesis cause of Al uh, Alzheimer's disease, further investigation in the realm uh, may lead to a novel therapeutic strategy, strategies. I mean, so, so even the drug doctors, the drug you know, type of research, understands that this is promising, but where's the money go? It goes to drugs that don't work because they make lots of money. Well, in this journal of Bio, uh, Medicine and Biotechnology, 2002, and this is uh, uh, from uh, Case Western Reserve University. Oh, that's right. That's a, that's a university with science. That, and they have a whole article on this. And what they say here, in the role of oxidative stress mechanisms seems to play in the pathogenesis of Alzheimer's disease may lead to novel clinical interventions. So, a, so there's over and over, these scientists are looking into the real cause of these diseases and finding real type of choices in terms of making like that. So finding a substance that has oxidative stress as its key factor in terms of reducing uh, and uh, this NERF2 activator called protanum uh, has been shown scientifically published in free radical biology, once again, and only by the most premier scientist in the world on free radical biology, Dr. McCord, 
showing that in 30 days, you were able to bring your oxidative stress down to a baby. So isn't that kind of important? So if that's something to concern about, you know, don't uh, think about waiting for some genetic engineering. It's happening now. The science says so. So be happy, prosper, and uh, have a